for today is found in the book of 1 Kings, the 17th chapter. And I'm just going to read you a portion of the lesson. You're welcome to pull out your sermon handouts if you'd like to follow along. I apologize for those online today. I forgot, I think, or did I send that to you, Terry? I did not. I did not send the sermon handout today. And so I apologize those following online. You will just have to do your best to not take too many vacations to Tahiti today. But I'll try to keep your attention as best as I can. So, but I'd like to read to you from, God, uh, from the book of uh, 1 Kings, 17th chapter. And I'm going to read the very ending of the story. We'll fill in the blanks in just a bit. But sometime later, a wo this woman's son became sick. And her son grew worse and worse. And finally, her son died. So the woman said to Elijah the prophet, O man of God, what have you done to me? Have you come here to point out my sin, to kill my son? But Elijah replied, Give me your son. And so he took up the child's body and took it into his arms, carried him up the stairs to a room where he was staying, and laid his body on the bed. And Elijah cried out to the Lord, O Lord God, why have you brought this tragedy upon this widow who had opened up her home to me and caused her son to die? So he stretched himself out over the child three times and cried to the Lord, O Lord God, please let this child's life return to him. So the Lord heard Elijah's prayer, and the life of the child was returned, and he was revived. And so Elijah brought him down to the upper room and gave him to the mother. He said, look, he said, this is your son, and he is alive. Here ends the lesson. Let us pray. Bless our time together, God. Open up our hearts to your word and your will. We ask this all in Jesus' name. Amen. Once again, we invite you to take out your sermon handouts, which is entitled, A God of Healing. And I'm really inspired by the service, uh, this lesson for today. And this is a lesson that, believe it or not, I've not preached on, and so I'm really excited about this opportunity. There's a companion to it in the gospel lesson. For those who are from liturgical traditions, you know that we often read from the Old Testament, also from the New Testament. And the New Testament lesson is kind of similar to it. A woman had lost her son. It was her only son. It says it was a widow. So you have to understand, the plight of a widow without her son is really dire. She has nothing because she can't get a job. There's no social security. Her son dies. She's got nothing to live for at this point. And so we're told that there's a big funeral processional, and Jesus kind of walks into us. And in that story, we're told that Jesus raises up her son and restores her son's health and restores her son back to it. So they're both stories that I think are really important for us to look at today because I want you to notice something about these stories that I'm going to point out to you. Are you ready? The person who received the healing and the blessing did not have faith. The mother who received the blessing and the return of the son did not have faith. It was not the faith of the mother. It wasn't the faith of the child that brought the healing into their lives. It was solely the gift and the will of God. Now, why do I say that? Because I know your television today is full of a lot of noise, of television evangelists and preachers out there preaching today and saying, the reason why you weren't healed is because you do not have enough faith. I don't see any faith in these stories to justify the healing that took place. It was a gift of God. And I'm really distressed by preachers who preach out there and say, well, you didn't have enough faith, therefore, just send me a little bit more money as a sign of your faith, yeah. and there you go. Hey, just throw me some money, baby. Right? <laughs> I'm outright telling you, you have my permission to turn off the TV to any preacher who asks you for money before they give you a gift of healing, because they are not of God. I'm outright saying that. I'm really risking here. I'm telling you, any preacher expects you to give money before you get a healing is not of God. Because why would I charge you for something that God gives me for free? Did you notice we don't take an offering here? Oh, we have an offering plate here. And you want to find it, that's all well and good. You don't, you want to just come here, you want to worship for free. I'm fine, well, fine, well and good with that. I never ask you for anything. Why? Because God gives freely without any strings attached, without us even having faith, oftentimes, because it's what? A gift of God. I've done my sermon, but I want to preach on the lesson today and tell you how I get this. Where did I get this from? These are the stories that are in the Bible. Almost every single healing story is a story about somebody who's healed who didn't have faith, but they came to faith 
after as a result of the healing story. And so I want to tell you a little bit about the Old Testament lesson when Ahab was the king. Just call me Ahab after all. Come on, nobody gets that? Ishmael, it's I know. Ishmael. I know it is. I just was kidding. I caught it right off. I was just kidding. I just wanted to do this. See if anybody's catching that. I was trying to be geeky with that, okay? <laughs> call me Ishmael, but call me Ahab. Okay, king of Israel. He was the uh, he was the son of Omri. Now, let me tell you what the Bible says of Omri. You're saying, who cares about Omri? Well, the Bible says Omri was evil in the sight of the Lord. He sinned more than all the other kings that came before him. Oh, until we got a hold of Ahab. Because guess what the Bible says of Ahab? Ahab did even more evil in God's sight. Well, the Bible just keeps outdoing each other. It kind of speaks in hyperbole here because every king outdoes the next and the next and the next. The next is more evil. Kind of reminds me, at, you know, Trinity Christian School, I'm a track and field coach there. And I went to the uh, awards banquet. And Mrs. Lowe, you two would appreciate this. Every single time at the awards banquet, she comes up and says, does a presentation about the, uh, um, about the uh, yearbook. And she says, and this year, the yearbook is the best yearbook we've ever done. Every single year she said that. She's been there for 25 years. And every year the yearbook has been better than the year before. I'm telling you, if this were true, they'd be getting Pulitzer Prizes for the yearbook by now. A little bit of hyperbole here. Nevertheless, the author of the Bible does the exact same thing. He's more evil than this guy who went before him. But regardless, this is a bad dude, this Ahab, okay? God wanted to wake up Israel, and so God caused, it says in the Bible, a drought. And the drought took a, a toll on the righteous and the unrighteous and the wicked. So everybody suffered. Everybody's in the same plight. And Elijah is well known. You have to understand, in that day and age, the, the messenger of the king often was rewarded or punished depending upon what message he was carrying from the king. And so can you imagine being a messenger and all of a sudden you're out to battle and your team loses and you've got to go tell the king, sorry, sorry king, but our team lost today. And no, you're actually saying, uh, you know, I think it's Josh's time to go and tell the message today because, you know, I'll do it tomorrow, all right, on a better day when the sun's shining and we win. So the messenger is responsible and accountable for the message that he brings. And so Elijah was a representative of God. And so he was the messenger that was bringing the bad news of the drought. And therefore responsible for it. So he wasn't a very popular person. The Bible says that he's kind of run into hiding. He goes by this little creek that's bringing him water. And the ravens bring him nourishment and so forth. But eventually the creek dries up. And he runs out of food. And so he goes into the village and... and uh, is supposed to look up a woman who's a widow, and he asks her for food. Now, this widow's got nothing. Why would you ask a widow? You're a pressing person who doesn't have much to begin with. He goes and he asks this woman, he says, hey, you've been chosen by God to bless me with food. Aren't I a great guy because I'm Elijah? And she's like, oh, dude, I was just getting ready to make my last loaf of bread, and my son and I were gonna eat it, and we're gonna die, and you're wanting to take a little bit of the food I got, Thank you very much. This is literal in her attitude, by the way. I'm telling you, it says in the Bible, this is how it says it. This is a literal translation. Are you crazy? Okay, maybe not quite, quite so little. Close. Close. Trust me. Look it up. Verse 12. God wouldn't ask such a thing of me. But you know, she ends up giving him a, lo a little bit of her loaf of bread. And you want to know why? Not because she's faithful. Not because she thinks... God is going to bless her because of this. She does it because he's what? He's a man. I was thinking humanity. Oh, no, no, a human. No, with an emphasis on man. Now, we've talked about this sometimes in the Old Testament, all the way book back at the book of Genesis 1. God lays out his plan that man and woman are created equal. And it's sin where man is, on, is over top of woman. That's sin. The Bible calls that a sin. Woman and man are supposed to be equal. But this thought process of man being the boss of woman obviously has creeped into our religiosity. And it's been passed on through religion. That's not God's will. It's religion, not God. Okay? So she got this from her religion that she had to be obedient to the man. I'm telling all those young women here, don't be obedient to any man. Okay? Please, I'm just telling you, it's not God, it's not the Bible. So she gave because she felt she had to. 
But here's the amazing thing. Despite the fact that she didn't want to do it, what did God do? Do you remember the story? God multiplied her meal. So that every single day she was able to feed her son, herself, and Elijah. How amazing. It's a miracle story for a woman who didn't have faith. Who didn't want to bless this guy to begin with, Elijah. Oh, oh, but we're not done. Then what happens is we're getting to the story that I read today. Her son dies. Dang! This is ridiculous. I mean, this is crazy. Uh, I don't know what you'd be feeling at this point, but you've sure been blessing the, the prophet of God who's already persona non grata, okay, and all the nation of Israel, and you're the one that's taking him in, putting your neck on the line, and then God goes and kills your son, at least that's the way your perception is of it. After everything I've done, the Bible says in verse 18, and it doesn't come across as well in the English translation, but she literally, the emphasis in Hebrew means she's literally screaming at Elijah. When you do that, is your only son, and you feel like you've been blessing the prophet, and God's taking your son from you, she's screaming, after everything I've done for you, this is how you're going to treat me? Once again, it's a, it's a widow. She's got nothing to live for if her son dies. Nothing. How dare you repay me in this way? So we're told in the lesson that Elijah takes a boy upstairs and there's a healing of sorts, a resuscitation of sorts. The boy is alive. God heals the boy and restores her, restores him to the mother. So what do we learn from this lesson? Like I said, I've already told you my, my cynicism oftentimes about television preachers, some of the time, not all of them. Many of them are very good, by the way. I don't want to indict everyone. I don't want to indict every faith healer because there are many great faith healers. But it does remind me that um, I actually was down, at, uh, down in, in Tulsa, Oklahoma, and went to a big healing one time, mass healing. There was a big advertise all over the place. And I was really excited because I thought, oh, we're going to be blessed by God here today. Okay? And so I'm waiting for God to bless me. And I go up to the faith healer. He's a very well-known faith healer. And I mean, he's coming up to people and slapping on the head, and they're being slain in the spirit and falling down. I'm like, oh, what's God going to do to me? And maybe you've heard me tell this story before. I don't know. But he came up to me. I'm telling you, there's no lie. came up to me, and I'm like, okay, what's God going to do? I can't wait. And all of a sudden, he said, he says, be healed. And I'm like, oh, that's just great. But he wasn't, he, walk, he started walking by me, touched me, be healed. But you know what? He walked by me, and I'm thinking, oh, this is great. God's blessing me. But he wasn't satisfied because guess what? It didn't happen to me. Yeah. I didn't collapse and fall down. I didn't because I just figured, okay, if God's going to, you know, they, they call it slaying the spirit. If God's going to slay me, God's going to slay me. It's not going to be my emotions that are going to do it. It's God that's going to do it, right? right? And I'm just, I'm not like that. I'm just like, okay, God, I'm open to it. Whatever you want to do. He wasn't happy. He came back and smacked me a little bit harder next time. And I still didn't go down because, again, I'm not resisting God. I'm just like, if God's going to do it, I figure it would come from the moving of the Holy Spirit, not my emotionalism. Right? And so he comes a third time because now he's really ticked off. And he literally comes and goes, BAM! He throws me into the arms of the guy sitting back and I'm like, well, this is really bogus. This is a bunch of bull. I, I just said, look, I'm open to God's blessing, but I'm not open to a guy, his ego being bruised because he's some faith healer, and I'm not responding the way he wants me to respond. This is not of God, okay? Mm -hmm. This is not of God. There are some stage presentations and some things that go on. God is going to heal and do what God wants to do. It's not your emotionalism that's going to do it, and it's certainly not a faith healer that brings the healing. Amen. It's the power of who? Of God. And God's going to do it regardless. In fact, I tell you what, you could have the most crooked pastor who's siphoning money off the kitty and going out and sleeping with every woman he can. And guess what? God can bring healing through that person because who is the one doing the healing? God. It's God. Okay? Let's not lose that. So what this lesson speaks to me today is about the deception of some, some, there are many faithful faith healers, some faith healers, who tell you these things. You didn't get healed because <coughs> you didn't have enough faith. You never have enough faith. Ever. I don't have enough faith. But God blesses me anyway. Thank God. It's because I don't have enough faith that God blesses me every single day. Okay? Faith the Lord tells you, you didn't do the right things the right way. You didn't put your hand on the TV the right way. Really, please. 
You didn't send sacrifice enough. You didn't send me enough money. <clears throat> These stories, number two, look at this, are about people who didn't ask, who didn't have any faith, but yet received the blessing of God. Because after all, healing is not some mechanical process in which you control God and do the right things and make God heal you. God, you have to understand, you're a child of God. God just wants to bless you. And so if you think you're going to make God bless you in some way because of something you do, you're not reading the Bible right. Okay? The Bible is filled with stories about God just wants to bless you because you're one of God's kids. Isn't that what a parent does for you? Are they sitting there? I mean, seriously, anybody's parents? Well, I mean, sure, there are some parents who do this, but good parents. Do they sit there and wait? Well, I'm going to decide whether or not I'm going to give you breakfast here today, depending on how good you are. No. They just give it to you because they love you. They bless you with good things because you're their child. That's what God does. So this is what this lesson means for me. Okay? God is a good God and a powerful God and a healing God. And God is powerfully active in our lives every single day. Right now, God is healing us and, and powerful in our lives. God chooses to do whatever God chooses to do, with or without my faith. So if God wants to dump a showers of blessing on me, God's going to dump a showers of blessing on me when I'm not even in relationship with God. And so I tell this even to my atheist friends. You know what? God is blessing you right now. Because God blesses atheists. You know that phrase in the Bible where it says God makes his rain fall on the just and the unjust? Yeah. Do you realize that rain is not, we think of it because we live in a rainy culture, we think of that as a, as, as a bad thing. We're talking about a desert culture. Rain was a blessing from God. What God is saying in that is that God makes his blessing to be showered upon the just and the unjust. God showers it everywhere. So you can be the most wicked person, you can be whatever, God still loves you. That's because God is just God, and God is good. God is always faithful, even in those times of great despair, to provide a witness of his love. And it is ultimately not my faith that causes the healing, but the power of God and the will of God. So what about my faith? What does faith have to do with it? And we hear that one phrase of Jesus that we misuse. Your faith has made you well. You know, Jesus didn't say that after every healing. There's one or two healings where somebody's faith, they had faith before they were healed. And it was a spectacular demonstration. But that was rare. Usually it was the opposite way. The healing made the person well. And be, as a result, they came to faith. I'm gonna, uh, you may not know this, but the Greek word for faith or for healing and salvation is the exact same word. God wants to bring healing and salvation into your life. And you can't have faith until God touches you with his love, his healing, and his salvation. Faith, so what does faith do? Faith does this for us. It leads us to understand that the action that taken, has taken place is the love of God. Faith is not the cause of the healing, but it is the appropriate response to it. I want to end with a story. And I've told this story once or twice. Some of you have heard it, some of you have not. And so I hope it's powerful for those who are hearing it for a second or third time. But it is probably my most powerful story about healing that's taken place in this church that I've seen. We had a man named Dick who was an agnostic. He's a lawyer, a very bright guy, diagnosed with cancer, throat cancer. I saw the testing of this, so I with my own eyes saw that he had this throat cancer. I was in the room when the doctor came and told him this, you have at best three to six months to live, at best. He said, if we remove your larynx, if we do radical treatments for you, we might be able to get a year, year and a half out of you. So Dick looked at me and said, I think I'm just going to live with my larynx so I can at least talk to my family and tell them I love them before I die. And I said, I think that's a great idea. I mean, he talked to me. I went to visit with him quite often. He liked me a lot, even though he didn't believe in God. And then I said to him, Dick, you know what? We're going to hold a prayer service, a healing service. We're just going to pray for you. Now, I don't claim to have any special talents or abilities. I don't think anybody's got the healing gift. I think that's a gift of God again. Mm -hmm. So yes. if, if there's a pastor through whom healings take place, it's not because of the pastor, it's because of God. Okay? But, and I, and I say this about what happened here. 
We had a service of healing for Dick. And about 15 people gathered up at our altar. And I, I'll never forget, but we prayed for him for maybe like a half an hour, 40 minutes. I don't remember how long it is. And we prayed for everybody else there too. And we anointed folks with oil and so forth. And, and a week after that, Dick went to the doctors. And he gives me a call. He says, Pastor, i got to talk to you. I said, oh, by the way, I forgot this part of it. Dick didn't show up for the prayer deal. Should service, by the way. Because he said, I'm glad for the prayers, but I don't really believe in that stuff. I'm just so you make sure we clarify this. So we had this prayer service. On that next Monday, he goes to the doctor. He calls me up. He says, Pastor Dave. I said, what? He says, you'll never believe this. I went to the doctor today, and they're going to talk about some type of treatments that at least make me comfortable. And all of a sudden, they noticed that the cancer was completely gone. And I'm like, now you have to understand, I, I, I was shocked myself. I said, whoa, what do you believe about God now? And he said, well, I don't know, but whatever you're doing, keep up the good work. <laughs> I said, well, I don't think it was me, by the way. Because I don't think I had the faith for that to happen, to be frank. I don't think I did. Um, we're going to jump ahead. you think he came to faith as we all of that? Uh, no, 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 no. Oh. Ten years. He lived ten more years. Wow. Still as an agnostic. Ten years later, he's on his deathbed a second time. Dick is. And uh, this time he's going to die. There's no, there's no out for him this time. I, I, and I, I go to visit with him. And I'm visiting with him. And we're pray, I pray with him and so forth. And I said, Dick, what, what is the hang-up? Like, why, why are you having a problem with this God thing? Uh, don't you know that God loves you? And I said, and, and God delivered you these ten years and so forth. He said, well... He said, the problem that I have is that, you know, it's all this religion and all these people talking about, you got to do this, you got to do that, all these rules and regulations. And he said, I, I, I just don't get into that. And I said, well, that's a darn good thing because neither do I. I said, but it's not about rules and regulations. That's religion and religiosity. God just wants to love you and spoke a word of love and forgiveness and the name of that love and forgiveness is Jesus. That's all it is. God just wants to love you, Dick. He said, and he looks at me. I'll never forget. He says, I think I can believe that. <laughs> he said, you know, I don't have to do anything. Not a thing, Dick. God just wants to love you and be a part of your life. I think I can accept that. That's awesome. So we pray. I went home. I'm telling you. Half hour after I walked to my house, I got a phone call. Dick had died. No lie. Dick received his healing. Because the healing wasn't healing from cancer. It was a deliverance to faith. And it took 10 years. But God is faithful. Always faithful. So I say that to you to give you some hope. Maybe you're looking at somebody in your life and you're saying, oh, they're having such a struggle. They're doing it. Just be patient. God is so good. God is so kind. Just dedicate people to God. Maybe you're struggling with your faith and your relationship with God. Just be patient. God is going to walk with you your entire life. Let us pray. Honey, Father, we're going to pray for healing right now because I believe healing is taking place here. It may not be in a spectacular way like we've seen it with Dick. Uh, it may not be a, a physical deliverance for cancer today. But you are always faithful to bring healing. Now, maybe it's not the complete healing we're looking for today, because sometimes healing is a progressive thing. Maybe a, a, a little piece here, a little piece here, because uh, we're not ready for that. I don't know. I don't know the answers of the wherefores, the whys, but I do know this, that today, right now, in the heart of every single person, you are working some gift and miracle of healing in their lives. Maybe it's a healing of a relationship. I'm going to tell you this true story as a part of our prayer today. I had somebody came to our church today who only comes maybe once every five months. He came today of all days to our earlier service and said, I want you to pray for me because my daughter, who I haven't had any contact with for 40 years, contacted me and we're getting together today. I said, oh, what a beautiful day to come because today is a day of healing. To me, that was evidence of the healing that God is doing. God is healing a relationship that was broken 40 years ago with his daughter. And it's happening right now as we're praying. He is being healed in his relationship with his daughter. And I believe that God can do that same type of powerful healing for you. Maybe it's a, 
a challenge of faith that you're struggling with, you're doubting or struggling or wrestling with something, it's okay. I, I struggle all the time. I tell folks I'm an agnostic believer. I believe, but I doubt. And I don't know. But I believe that God is present. And I give thanks to that. Maybe you're struggling with a relationship with a friend or a spouse. Maybe it's a, a, a physical touch that you need today. Maybe you, you're just heartbroken over somebody else's uh, needs. And you're here today for them. I don't know. But I believe God is here present to heal. Yes. And so we dedicate you today to God's healing presence. For it's in Jesus' name we give thanks. Amen. Amen.